Good morning. Good, you were working. I was kind of a bit scared there for a moment because Mr. M dropped the camera yesterday. Um, it was, well, he didn't drop it, he knocked it off the bed. To be honest, it was my fault for leaving it on the bed, probably, but that was a little bit stressful, but you appear to be working, so that is good. It is Wednesday the 1st of July today, and I thought I would do a little vlog and I thought that I would chat with you. The mirror is here, so I'm sorry if I'm looking at you the whole time um, that I'm talking in this segment. I will look at you properly in a bit. I can't even see you properly right now because I, I don't have my glasses on. Um, so I trust that you were, <laughs> that you were there. Um, I don't think that I have vlogged as in across several days and showing you what I'm up to in maybe over a month and there is a reason for that I was having to have a little bit of a word with myself and I would like to know if you guys have found this too um I, I guess if you make content online or even if you're just freelance or it could be relevant to a different part of your life um at the beginning of lockdown I was like okay I'm gonna um I'm gonna bake more because baking is a really good stress reliever I've been calling it stress baking so have other people because it's kind of comforting to follow a set of instructions and know hopefully if you follow the instructions correctly that you're gonna get something at the end of it it's I don't know, it's like a puzzle, but a puzzle that that is e easy to solve and also you get to eat it. An edible puzzle, how great. So I started baking more and cooking more um, and um, that was really great. I'm still doing that. But then I thought, oh, I should film the baking because that will be relaxing for other people because you guys have been asking me to do this and it was i found it fun to film it and that was great and sharing recipes with you guys which i'll also be doing today was really fun but then and this is not you this is entirely me i then thought any time that i was baking my brain went you should be filming this this is content you should do something with this be productive in your baking instead of just baking for the sake of baking and it stopped being a stress reliever and I had turned it into something much more complicated than it needed to be, which was just a bit ridiculous. I know why I did that. I think because um, when I vlog and I differentiate the two, like sitting down, talking to you about books, vlogs, and the like out and about vlogs, I would vlog <laughs> when I had something interesting that was going on. You know, if I was going to a book festival or something or whatever. And that is when I would uh, get out the camera and take you along with me for the day or for the week but obviously at the moment all of my days look the same because all of my days are inside this flat and probably will be for the foreseeable so um baking was the new exciting can we call baking exciting I'm calling it exciting it was the new thing that I was doing so that was going to be the thing that differenti differentiated my days um and therefore felt vloggable but I don't want to just do things for content uh, and I want to have moments and times where I'm just doing things for the sake of doing them, not for a video. Um, so as I said, that was me, not you. So I took a slight break from vlogging my days so that I could just chill myself out a bit, <laughs> have a word with myself, calm down. Yes. So that's what I've been doing. Um, so what have we been doing this time? We've been playing lots of board games. It's slightly, um, our board game collection is getting a bit ridiculous, but it's like our one thing. <laughs> it's our thing. It has become our thing. Um, so I will film another like a board game video at some point. It's also Mr. M's birthday this week. So uh, my mum and gran have bought him a board game. His mum has bought him a board game and I have bought him a board game. Actually, it's a great birthday in the sense that I'm benefiting massively from these presents that he's getting. So that's cool. Thanks for having a birthday, husband. Cheers. Um, yeah, so we've been playing board games. Um, the other day we watched the film about Eurovision with Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams. It was simultaneously the best and the worst thing I think I've ever seen in my life. And now my workout soundtrack is the film 
soundtrack i mean maybe i'll talk about it more in a like what i have been watching and doing in lockdown video because it was fun but uh yeah i think i just would have preferred a film only with the eurovision in it and just more ridiculous contestants and songs because that was joyful and dan stevens was fantastic so that was great um the other day mr m and i where's the lid here it is mr m and i made some things out of model clay he bought some model clay and um, because he'd really wanted to take some pottery classes this year but obviously not gonna happen right now so he bought some model clay he was much better it than i am i will insert a clip of that hopefully i haven't deleted it actually because that was a while ago i think i still have it i'll insert that here while i put on my eyebrows he said he was going to make a uh, a water dragon so like an underwater dragon version of franklin and i said i was going to make a bookcase and if the bookcase didn't work out which spoiler it didn't i was going to make some mushrooms instead you can decide who won at this particular activity i'm crashing it no goodbye Oh. It's so good. Hold it up to the hand. It does look better with them on its tail, though. You have to give it a name. Benjamin. Yours is much, much better, but here is my effort. Some little mushrooms. Alright, let's see what we need to bake it. I told you, his dragon was much better than my mushrooms. Oh yeah, this is something else that I did. I cut my hair at the weekend. I also cut Mr. M's hair, which I think was slightly more successful than mine. Mine is okay, but don't look too closely because it's quite uneven but you know who cares as i said it is wednesday the first of july and wednesdays at the moment i work late because i'm running or have been running because this is the last one group writing workshops for the past 14 weeks so every wednesday for the past 14 weeks it has been the end of those workshops where we have a two-hour skype chat and i give feedback to everyone and yeah so this is the last one for a while and so I'm just folding my headscarf, there we go. And because I'm gonna be working until about 10 o'clock tonight, I thought I would take a mid-morning break and make some bagels. And I would like you to join me, please. I know I just said that before I was feeling pressure that I put on myself to record every bake ever and I didn't want to do that. I do want to record this one because making bagels is fun. And um, yeah, so let's do it. Um, let's make bagels together. because it's been a while since I've recorded any baking. Also, <laughs> I filmed a haul yesterday, so what I should do first is put away these books. I have to try and find homes for them on my shelves. I uploaded a video a couple of weeks ago where I was um, sorting out my books and unpacking books that had been in storage, and I really thought building this new bookcase, which is just here, would mean that I would have a lot more space, but I don't know what it is. The more bookcases you have, they just seem to fill up. I mean, this is obviously because I'm buying books, but uh, yeah, I need to do some Tetris with my bookshelves first. Okay, let me show you how I make bagels. I add two and three quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast to 360 milliliters of water, whisk that around and then leave it to rest for five minutes. After that, I add 500 grams of strong white flour with one tablespoon of sugar, two teaspoons of salt, I think, um, and then I add the yeast and water to that and knead it for five minutes before covering it in a bowl that's coated with olive oil and leaving it to rise for an hour. Look at this satisfying cleaning away. 
I really do love speed cleaning, I do. <laughs> so after an hour, it should have doubled in size. And then you want to take it out of the bowl and divide it in half and then divide each hole, each hole, each half into four. So in total, you're breaking it up into eight. And then you roll each of those eight pieces into a ball and you poke a hole in the middle of it. That's the technical way. So then you should have bagels that look like this. You lay them out on baking trays, which have parchment paper on, and then you boil three pints of water with 60 grams of honey, and you whisk that together. This is to make a glaze, and it's probably one of the most important steps of making bagels. After you've done that, you then put each of the bagels into the water, and you cook them for one minute on each side. After you've done that, you then coat the top of each bagel with an egg wash and then you dip them in sesame seeds, which is a very fun thing to do. And then you cook them in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes on 200 degrees Celsius and they come out looking like this and they are very delicious. I had a bagel for my lunch, I've got four left over, and then I've got three bagels in this bag here, which I'm gonna lower out the window in a minute to Lena, who's going on her uh, daily walk. And I said, would she like some fresh bagels? So she's gonna come and collect them. I feel almost like I'm running a little bakery out of this kitchen and then lowering the baked goods out the window. And I said on Instagram, what shall I call my hypothetical bakery? And you guys suggested so many amazing things. My particular favourite was the bread that was baked in the middle of the night, which uh, I enjoyed. I also enjoyed this. Lena sent me this. She said, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Please meditate on which one of these you are. I would like to know by the time you arrive. So I would like to know which one of these you are as well. So it's names for people who read a lot in different languages. So in English, we say someone is a bookworm. In Indonesian, they say someone is a book flea. In Romanian, you are a library mouse, which I think I quite like. In German, you are a red rat or a reed rat. Germans, let me know which one is it, I don't know. In French, you are an ink drinker and in Danish, you are a reading horse. Which one of those are you? I think library mouse, um, though I think I'm only saying that because the other day we took our breakfast to Mr M's mum's garden and we met a field mouse who came and stole my granola. I will insert some of that here. my bakery. No problem. I'm going to eat my bagels now. Oh wow. Amazing. <laughs> Hello. It is the next day now. It's the afternoon. Mr. M and I just had lunch. We had the bagels that I made yesterday and I made some guacamole to go with it. We also played a board game, which is something, I know I say that we play board games a lot, but we're trying to play a short board game at lunchtime each day because we're quite bad at taking lunch breaks, which I'm sure that many of you are too. Um, and sitting in front of your computer with food is not great at the best of times. 
I don't know if you've noticed, but now is not the best of times. So we're trying to play a quick board game at lunchtime, wherever possible. So today we played Hanover Koji, and it's a new one that we, um, or he bought recently actually. And he was beating me a lot beforehand, and now, now I'm fighting back. Um, I, what I would show you, speaking of board games, the ones that he's got for his birthday. And also I'm gonna show you a couple of other things that I have been enjoying recently. Um, so these are the board games, which I'll speak about once I've actually played them and know what they're about. Um, he takes his board game research very, very, very seriously. So these are ones that he had researched and uh, requested. So this one is a gift from my gran and my mum and it's called The Castles of Burgundy. Um, it looks like it has quite a lot of pieces. Um, he also requested Battle Line. Um, I think this is the one that his mum bought him, yes, which is called Spirit Island, which he said was very complicated. I bought him Five Tribes, which I think was the one that was at the top of his list, which looks a little bit like Carcassonne, but I don't think is actually like Carcassonne at all. Let me know if you have played any of these. Um, a book arrived. I know that I've been buying a lot of books recently, but call it therapy. Look at this cover, it is stunning. I have never read anything by Silvia Marina Garcia before, but I was drawn to this one, which is called Mexican Gothic. It's set in the 1950s, and it's about a young woman who I think receives a message from her cousin asking her to save her from this haunted house. That sounds really intriguing to me. That's not the one that I'm gonna be reading next though. The one that I'm gonna be reading next is this one here, which I plan to start this evening, which is Bluebird, Bluebird by Attica Locke, which is the first in a crime series set in Texas, I think. Yeah, it says that it's about Darren Matthews, who's a black Texas ranger working in the backwards town of Highways 59. I've heard great things about this series and I'm buddy reading this with Lauren, which I am thrilled about. I also wanted to show you these cards, which I bought on Etsy, they're designed by Amanda White who makes these amazing cutout collages. She mainly does classic writers and their houses but she also does various other people as well. For instance this is Mary Banning who is a badass paleontologist. Um, I was going to include these in a favourites video but I think I bought eight and I've already posted four so I'm showing you here before I send out all of them and have nothing to show but I'm sure I'll buy more in the future. This is the Bronte house in autumn this is the Bronte house at night. Uh, and then these are the Bronte sisters walking in the moors. And she has such, such beautiful cards. I'll link her Etsy shop down below because I think her work is charming. Today I have been editing someone's novel, which has been fun. If you didn't know, I offer editorial services as well as running writing workshops. I'll leave details for those in the description box down below if that happens to be of interest. And something that I wanted to mention yesterday, when I run group workshops, I always leave a space for someone who would like to take part but can't afford to. And recently I've been offering um, a series of workshops to black and POC writers as well. All those spaces has, have been claimed, but I have five spaces for editorial feedback. So if you're a black or POC writer who's a poet and you would like feedback for free on a bundle of poems, that's something that I'm offering right now, I will leave my email address in the description box down below and you can get in touch if that's something that you are interested in. Um, also, I got the cutest email today. Um, a lot of my job, as you know, in normal times, is doing events and going into schools and talking about my children's books, um, as well as my other books as well. Um, and that is um, one of the most rewarding parts of my job, I think, is teaching poetry to kids. It's very fun and I miss it. Um, so I got really emotional when I received this email from a school um, and one of the classes had written letters to me and Katie um, with drawings of Franklin and Luna, I'll put some on the screen, um, asking us to write them a letter because they're making a display in their library. <laughs> Love it so much. I just realised that my knee is in shot and you may have wondered what, what this was. I'm just sitting on this chair quite strangely. I'm going to have to do some yoga with Adrian later to stretch myself out again. But yeah, it was lovely to receive that email and other messages from children who've been enjoying Franklin during lockdown. Um, the gap between writers and readers at the moment feels big and it's nice to remember that that's actually not true. 
I think I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Let me know how you are in a comment down below, please, because I genuinely would like to know. I hope you're doing okay, and I will see you very soon for my June wrap-up video. Sending lots of love. Bye.